Well, this is an accidental behind the scenes video of an upcoming video I'm planning to do on this Dell XPS laptop. This thing is my old Dell XPS M1530. It's a computer I've had for several years now. It was my old Windows 7 laptop for playing old games actually, but it has a number of neat things about it, so I thought it would be kind of an interesting video. This laptop, oh Jesus Christ, this thing is dirty. Hang on a second. This thing has a really glossy display on it. This was an old Windows Vista Core 2 Duo era laptop. I won't go too in depth on the specs, but really quickly, it has an Intel Core 2 Duo T8300 CPU with four gigabytes of RAM and the NVIDIA GeForce 8600 MGT. So this thing would have been pretty loaded for its time. The one thing I didn't get with this computer was a hard drive. I originally had a 320 gig drive, but eventually I had to take it out for another computer and then I ended up with this 500 gigabyte Seagate drive, which worked fine until just a few weeks ago when the head failed. So we can't use this drive anymore. This is why I keep backups of everything for this exact reason. Unfortunately, the only drive I have left is a 100 gigabyte hard drive. At least it's 7200 RPM, but like I said, this computer used to have Windows 7 on it and the backup is way too big for this machine. So we're going to have to start again from zero because this thing's just not gonna fit on this hard drive. I have the original Windows Vista home premium image that would have shipped on this computer, however, and this thing has never seen a completely blank reset to factory settings since I caught it, so I figured this would be a good opportunity to do that. So with that in mind, let's begin. Now to start this process, we first need to install a blank copy of Windows Vista onto this machine. I fortunately have the original disk that was provided from Dell all these years later. We're not actually going to be installing Windows Vista on this machine. However, this thing's recovery is actually, as I mentioned, just a Windows image file, which means it needs to boot up to the system recovery options on Windows itself. And because this is a blank hard drive with no Windows install on it, it's not going to show up at all, even on an installed disk. Fortunately, installing Windows is a piece of cake on this, so that's not too big of a deal. And by the way, it has to be Windows Vista. It can't be Windows 7 or anything newer, since it just won't show up on there. Now that the Windows Vista install is done, it's time to actually boot into this thing's repair your computer mode so we can actually get this underway. This is basically just like the Toshiba A665 video I did in that the recovery wizard is part of the Windows recovery options, which I guess works. But sure enough, with an actual install of Windows, the option is there. I wish you could run this off a disk, but it makes sense why you can't. With that in mind, this utility will restore your system software to the state it was in when it left the factory. In order to return the system to the factory state, all personal files will be overwritten. Which makes sense, it's just applying an image. And yeah, this utility will reformat your operating system hard drive partition prior to restoring the factory image. And I don't think I need to redress. And that's it. It's a pretty simple process. By the way, if anybody's curious, I'll link this image in the description just in case you want to check it out. It will actually work on anything that's not this laptop, provided you can get proper drivers for it.
And boom, done. Your operating system and factory installed applications have now been restored to the state they were when they left the factory. That was a pretty easy process, it only took about 25 minutes or so, so let's reboot the system now. Huh. Interesting. This is where I hit my first snag on this. The computer was just boot looping. It would sound like it was making some hard drive activity, but then it would just restart again. Fortunately, I actually messed with this media on another computer, so I think I have an idea of what's wrong. Let's go ahead and boot into the install DVD again. We're not actually going to be installing Windows Vista again, we just need the repair your computer mode again. This time, Windows found problems with the computer's startup, so let's go ahead and repair and restart. <laughs> hey, not bad! Not sure why it needs to do that, but it could have just been how this image was uploaded, or it's how I downloaded it, because this image was actually corrupted when I downloaded it, and I had to do a lot of work to fix it. And a short little while later, we're done! Here we have the setup screen. It was as easy as that. It wasn't like the other computers where it needed to configure anything else, it just did the recovery and rebooted into the setup. So there we go, Windows Vista Home Premium by Dell. This is running at this computer's native res, which is 1440 by 900 so it's gonna seem slightly stretched since this video is 1080p, but I'm just simply duplicating it from the laptop's internal display since I can't see otherwise. Interestingly, the Dell license terms are simply asking you to read the Dell license terms that came with your computer. Which is... <laughs> thanks Dell. Otherwise, this is all just standard Windows Vista setup stuff. And after waiting for Windows to do the performance check and everything, there we are. Immediately greeted with several pop-ups, so that's great. The first things that came up were the Windows Vista Welcome Center, as well as Google Gadgets, which came preloaded on this thing. The next thing was Trend Micro Internet Security, which I am probably not going to use. And finally, the Dell Getting Started Guide, which allows you to get on the internet. But anyways, there we go. It's completely done. That was actually pretty easy. And I still have about 60 gigabytes left over on this hard drive. I want to get a better drive for this, to be fair, but for now, this is, again, the only drive I have that isn't being reserved for another project. As far as programs, this thing comes with a full copy of Adobe Photoshop Elements 6 and Premiere Elements 4. Presumably, this would have been an add-on option that would have cost money when this computer was new and it just came with this specific hard drive image, but I don't know, maybe they just came with them all. But still, this is pretty neat stuff to have pre-installed. It also comes with the obligatory install of Adobe Reader 8. Adobe Reader 8.1. Wait... We better move on. Creative Media Source Go, which appears to be some kind of audio utilities and editing things, including Wave Studio 7, which I had to look it up, but apparently it's an audio editing thing. It almost kind of seems like Audacity. Creative Media Source, which is a digital music center for playing, creating, organizing, and transferring digital music. Whoa, it's just a media player. And Creative Audio Center, which appears to just be audio settings. It also has Dell Media Direct, which is a media center competitor that came preloaded with this thing. Similar to HP's Media Smart and Quick Play things, this was basically supposed to be the exact same thing as Media Center. I'll cover this more in depth in the video I do on this computer, but it's basically just the same stuff as Windows Media Center with a few extra things like Instant Office. We also have a ton of Dell software utilities and stuff that's kind of boring. Dell DataSafe, which appears to be the backup thing it was talking about earlier. Dell QuickSet. You can tell whoever designed this software really thought that graphic design was their passion. And apparently it has a link to Windows Mobility Center, which has been customized by Dell, which is... interesting. It also has Dell support links. 
the Dell Webcam Center. This thing actually does have a webcam on it, which would have been a pretty new thing for the time. And can confirm, it does in fact work. <laughs> and Dell Wireless, which doesn't actually work in this case since this thing doesn't have any Wi-Fi drivers for some reason. We also have drivers for the fingerprint reader this thing comes with. Google Desktop, which I probably will just uninstall. A copy of Microsoft Office Home and Student 2007, which apparently isn't actually activated and needs a key, so that's useless. It's okay, I have a full copy of Office 2007 anyway. It also has Roxio Creator DE on it, which has already expired apparently. Not really sure how that's possible. Maybe because it's set to the current date and time. And the aforementioned Trend Micro Internet Security. So not a whole lot of stuff installed on this out of the box, but a pretty alright software package for its time. It comes with pretty much all the basics. Here's the Windows Experience Index if you want to see it at all. And as far as the install of Windows itself goes, this is unfortunately only a 32-bit copy of Vista, not a 64-bit one. Which kind of seems like a wasted opportunity given the Core 2 Duo CPU with more than 3.5 gigs of RAM. It also comes preloaded with several wallpapers from Dell, which is, uh, nice. Although I like the standard Vista one more. The last thing I'll need to figure out with this is the network driver, which apparently hasn't properly installed. It installed everything else other than the Wi-Fi driver, so I'm not really sure why exactly that didn't install right, unless this specific image doesn't have a driver for this exact Wi-Fi card. Either way, it's some kind of Intel wireless card. I can install it later, it's just kind of interesting that it didn't come with it. This graphics driver probably will need to be updated as well if I'm going to run any games on this thing, which is reasonable enough. Otherwise, that's kind of about it. This was a pretty easy restore to do, actually. I was expecting this to be a lot more difficult than it turned out to be. Again, I'll still need to get a proper drive for this thing, since this hard drive is only meant to be temporary. And I'll definitely have to spend some time setting this thing up. This computer will receive its own video eventually, because it is a pretty neat system. This thing only came with Vista Home Premium RTM, by the way, so it's going to need a lot of time updating it and everything. But for now, I think that's pretty much about it with this thing.